Okay, we're continuing with Leviticus 10, the death of Nadab and Abihu, or Abihu. Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers, they're these incense burners, put fire in them, and added incense, and they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord contrary to his command. So a fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Moses then said to Aaron, This is what the Lord spoke of when he said, Among those who approach, who approach me, I will be proved holy. In the sight of all the people, I will be honored. Aaron Remain silent. Moses summoned Mishael and Elzaphan, sons of Aaron's uncle Uziel, and said to them, Come here, carry your cousins outside the camp, away from the front of the sanctuary. So they came and carried them, still in their tunics, outside the camp, as Moses ordered. Then Moses said to Aaron and his sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, Do not let your hair become unkempt, and do not tear your clothes, or you will die, and the Lord will be angry with the whole community. But your relatives, all the Israelites, may mourn for those the Lord has destroyed by fire. Do not leave the entrance to the tent of meeting, or you will die, because the Lord's anointing oil is on you. So they did as Moses said. Then the Lord said to Aaron, You and your sons are not to drink wine, wine, you know, alcohol, or other fermented drink, whenever you go into the tent of meeting or you will die this is a lasting ordinance for the generations to come so that you can distinguish between the holy and the common between the unclean and the clean and so if you can teach the Israelites all the decrees the Lord has given them through Moses Moses said to Aaron and his remaining sons. So remember Aaron, if you, uh, if you don't remember, Aaron has four sons, but two of them are now dead. So Eleazar and Ithamar, take, take the grain offering left over from the food offerings prepared without yeast and present to, to the Lord and eat it beside the altar, for it is most holy. Eat it in the sanctuary area, because it is your share and your son's share of the food offerings presented to the Lord. For so I have commanded. But you and your sons and your daughters may eat the breast that was waved and the thigh that was presented. Eat them in a ceremonially clean place they have been given to you and your children as your share of the Israelites fellowship offerings the thigh that was presented and the breast that was waved must be brought with the fat portions of the food offerings to be waved before the Lord as a wave offering this will be the perpetual share for you and your children, as the Lord has commanded. When Moses inquired about the goat of the sin offering and found that it had been burned up, he was angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons, and asked, Why didn't you eat? 
the sin offering in the sanctuary area. It is most holy. It was given to you to take away the guilt of the community by making atonement for them before the Lord. Since its blood was not taken into the holy place, you should have eaten the goat in the sanctuary area as I commanded. Aaron replied to Moses, Today they sacrificed their sin offering and their burnt offering before the Lord, but such things as this have happened to me. Would the Lord have been pleased if I had eaten the sin offering today? When Moses heard this, he was satisfied. Let's go to Leviticus 11. Clean and unclean food. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, Say to the Israelites, Of all the animals that live on land, these are the ones you may eat. You may eat any animal that has a divided hoof and that chews the cud. There are some that only chew the cud or only have a divided hoof, but you must not eat them. The camel, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is ceremonially unclean for you. The hyrax, though it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. The rabbit, though it chews the, the cud, it chews the cud, does not have a divided hoof. It is unclean for you. And the pig, though it has a divided hoof, does not chew the cud. It is unclean for you. You must not eat their meat or touch their carcasses. They are unclean for you. Of all the creatures living in the water of the seas and the streams, you may eat any that have fins and scales, but all creatures in the seas or streams that do not have fins and scales, whether among all the swarming things or among all the other living creatures in the water, you are to regard them, uh, regard as unclean, and since you are to regard them as unclean, you must not eat their meat. You must regard their carcasses as as unclean. Uh, as unclean. Anything living in the water that does not have fins and scales is to be regarded as unclean by you. These are the birds you are to regard as unclean and not eat because they are unclean. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, any kind of black kite, any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hoopoe, and the bat. All flying insects that walk on all fours are to be regarded as unclean by you. There are, however, some flying insects that walk, walk on all fours that you may eat. Those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground. Of these you may eat any kind of locust, katydid, cricket, or grasshopper. But all other flying insects that have four legs you are to regard as unclean. You will make yourselves unclean by these. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening. Whoever picks up 
one of their carcasses must wash their clothes, and they will be unclean till evening. Every animal that does not have a divided hoof or that does not chew the cud is unclean for you. Whoever touches the carcass of any of them will be unclean. Of all the animals that walk on all fours, those that walk on their paws are unclean for you. Whoever touches their carcasses will be unclean till evening. Anyone who picks up their carcasses must wash their clothes, and they will be unclean till evening. These animals are unclean for you. Okay. Of the animals that move along the ground, these are unclean, unclean for you. The weasel, the rat, any kind of great lizard, the gecko, the monitor lizard, the wall lizard, the skink, and the chameleon. Of all those that move along the ground, these are unclean for you. Whoever touches them, when they are dead, will be unclean till evening. When one of them dies and falls on something, that article, whatever its use, will be unclean. Whether it is made of wood, cloth, hide, or sackcloth, put it in water. It will be unclean till evening, and then it will be, then it will be clean. If one of them falls into a clay pot, everything in it will be unclean, and you must break the pot. Any food you are allowed to eat that has come into contact with, with water from any such pot is unclean, and any liquid that is drunk from such a pot is unclean. Anything that one of their carcasses falls on becomes unclean. An oven or cooking pot must be broken up. They are unclean, and you are to regard them. Regard them as unclean. A spring, however, or a cistern for collecting water remains clean, but anyone who touches one of these carcasses is unclean. If a carcass falls on any seeds that are to be planted, they remain clean. But if water has been put on the seed and a, and a carcass falls on it, it is unclean for you. If an animal that you are allowed to eat dies, Anyone who touches its carcass will be unclean till evening. Anyone who eats some of its carcass must wash their clothes and they will be unclean till evening. Anyone who pick, picks up the carcass must wash their clothes and they will be unclean till evening. Every creature that moves along the ground is to be regarded as unclean. It is not to be eaten. You are not to eat any creature that moves along the ground, whether it moves on its belly or walks on all fours or on many feet. It is unclean. Do not defile yourselves by any of these creatures. Do not make yourselves unclean by means of them or be made unclean by them I am the Lord your God consecrate yourselves and be holy because I am holy do not make yourselves unclean by any creature that moves along the ground I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God.
Therefore, be holy, because I am holy. These are the regulations concerning animals, birds, every li living thing that moves about in the water, and every creature that moves along the ground. You must distinguish between the unclean and the clean, between living creatures that may be eaten and those that may not be eaten. So here is a question. Should you eat pork? <sighs> well, I think if you are Jewish, it is a heavy, heavy question. But if you are not Jewish, I heard it said, is your mother Jewish? If your mother does not go to synagogue, you know, you are not Jewish. So I wouldn't worry about it. I, I wouldn't worry about it. Just go ahead and eat pork. Leviticus 12, purification after childbirth. The Lord said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, A woman who becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son will be ceremonial, ceremonially unclean for seven days, just as she is unclean during her monthly period. Okay, let's stop for a second. What is this, all of this clean and unclean? Let's, I'll take a guess. When you go into that tabernacle area, uh, God is holy. So, you have to be clean. Just as you cannot go to church on Sunday without having showered. I mean, you, you could, but... No, most people shower before they go into church. Or could you even be, you know, less presentable? Sometimes they talk about the style of clothing you might want to consider when you go into the church. So let's take a look at Leviticus 10. It is talking about, again, Nadab and Abihu, how they died. The Lord God said, those who approach me, I will be proved holy. So what did they really do? They, they offered an authorized fire. So God killed them. They did their priestly duties in a way that God did not authorize. Authorized. So he killed two priests. Now, regarding clean and unclean food, that's easy to understand. There are many animals that I would I would not eat. I can't, you know, I can't eat any animal. So, um. God, you know, the creator, the Lord, he expects you to mostly eat those kind of animals. The bull, you know, the sheep and goat, you know, dove and pigeon, and flour, you know, baked into loaves of bread or cake. 
So he get, he he's spelling things out, you know, because maybe people in the past, you know, they needed to be told. So he's saying, actually, you can eat more, but there are many I would, I do not want you to eat. For example, he said, you can eat some of these locusts and crickets, and you can eat. You can also eat. What else can you eat? Hmm. You can't eat the camel. Nope. The rabbit cannot eat the rabbit. And uh, with regarding birds, uh, you cannot eat many of them. Nope. But it seems like fish. There aren't. He's, God isn't. Uh, he just says they have to have fins and scales. Okay, let, let us return to Levit, Leviticus 12. So, you know, let's just use the example of the church. So a woman, after she gives birth, God is saying, you know, seven days after she gives birth, for example, don't come to church. Or uh, don't feel like you have to. People, I was saying in other videos, people spoke differently in the past. A woman who becomes pregnant and gives birth to a son will be ceremonially ceremonially unclean for seven days, just as she is unclean during her monthly period. On the eighth day, the boy is to be circumcised. Then the woman must wait 33 days to be purified from her bleeding. She must not touch anything sacred or go to the sanctuary until the days of her purification are over. If she gives birth to a daughter for two weeks, the woman will be unclean as during her period. Then, then she must wait 66 days to be purified from her bleeding. When the days of her purification for a son or daughter are over, she is to bring to the priest at the entrance to the tent of meeting a year old lamb for a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a dove for a sin offering. He shall offer them before the Lord to make atonement for her and then she will be ceremonially clean from her flow of blood. These are the regulations for the woman who gives birth to a boy or a girl. But if she cannot afford a lamb, she is to bring two doves or two young pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. In this way, the priest will make atonement for her. For her and she will be clean okay great thank you for listening it seems it seems so 
There's so many notes. I mean, there's so many details. But just hang in there. So put God first, he'll take your places.